Peace and blessing. I'm Sir Sesh Ab Hater Boxley, and we're here in my hometown of Natchez, Mississippi, at the Natchez Visitors and Convention Center, where I have an exhibition about chattel slavery selling markets, the markets that operated in Natchez from 1833 to the 1860 Civil War, called the Forks of the Road. This is a place that was east of Natchez where dealers, enslavement traffickers who were selling our ancestors from the uh, Upper South, uh, Maryland, Virginia, DC, uh, Kentucky, Missouri, and bringing them down to Natchez, Mississippi uh, during the days of chattel slavery, roughly from 1833 to 1863 uh, when the Union Army occupied Natchez and they operated at the Forks of the Road, a juncture place in Natchez, east of Natchez called the Forks of the Road. I've been working on the history of chattel slavery since 1995, my return back to Natchez. And what I'm essentially doing is I'm carrying on an equal history campaign. Equal history means to me in definition, overcoming white people trying to make it look like they've done everything by themselves. So Natchez is a historic city. At one point, it was the most uh, uh, rich. It was the richest uh, city in the in the Deep South in terms of the Cotton Kingdom. There were more millionaires in Natchez at one point around the 1850s than any other place per capita. They say in the country. This was based upon uh, selling and buying of enslaved people who were enslaved on the plantations in the surrounding areas uh, in what they call the old Natchez district, uh, of the counties of Jefferson, Claiborne, Adams, Wilkerson, Franklin, and the parishes of Concordia and Tinsaw parishes in Louisiana were essentially the concentration of enslaved persons who were sold here. The, the, the folks of the road market was said to be the second largest enslavement selling market in the Old Southwest outside of New Orleans. New Orleans was considered to be the largest one in the Deep Southwest, not in the complete South, because in the complete South, Charleston, South Carolina was the largest. So what I've been able to do for the last 23 years is to look at this history of chattel enslavement and find and research the stories and the ads a whole complexity of research done to help uh, come up with the facts and the data that, that reflects the history of what happened in Natchez at the Forks of the Road enslavement market. And as a result of that research, I put together a traveling exposition uh, exhibit uh, as such. It's called uh, Forks of the Road and uh, we want to look at this Forks of the Road traveling exhibit. I want you to come with me, and I'm going to try to give you an example, a quick explanation of what the exhibit contains. And so the first panel in the exhibit is called Forks of the Road Enslavement Market, the, a major southwest hub of America's domestic slave trade. And when I say the word slave, it's going to be in quotation because I would never call my ancestors that oppressive term slave. Uh, we wouldn't call our great great grandparents the other names or any oppressive names as such. And there's no real social redeeming need in 2018 to be refer referring to our African ancestors as slave. That's somebody else's oppressive term. And we want to use the term enslaved, which tells us that at one point in time, we had another status other than being forced brought out of Africa in captivity and enslaved in the Americas. So the first panel gives you an idea of where the location of the marketplaces would be. You can see this is a juncture of streets uh, east of Natchez that were called St. Catherine Street, Liberty Road, and Washington Road. And there were these enslavement markets where you see the brown squares located at uh, the Forks of the Road. And 
dozens upon dozens of dealers, or traders, or traffickers, or what have you, operated from this site. So I wanted you to be able to uh, see what the location, see, see uh, what the title is, if it, if it is, and then it's in the alphabetical order, we can move to the second panel. The second panel, uh, panel number two, is called Natchez, an early gateway for European migrating southwest and center of chattel enslavement and trafficking. That is, Natchez, the city of Natchez in Mississippi was at the center of trading. And essentially, this panel shows you the early history of the different uh, invaders into uh, the Mississippi Natchez area. Uh, we had uh, in the early history the French, 1700, early 1700, the same people who invaded New Orleans. And then later on, we had the British and the Spanish who took turns invading and occupying the area of Mississippi and Natchez. And finally, the, the group of people who were called the Americans who uh, also occupied Natchez and what have you. And it tells us, uh, gives you a picture of the example of the prince among slaves. That, that was, an, was an enslaved person called Abdul Rahman Ibrahim, who was a Fulani brought from uh, West Africa up around Timbuktu. And this just gives us a sample of the thousands of enslaved African people who were forcefully brought in captivity during when America created the uh, uh, embargo uh, of the law against further bringing Africans' ancestors into the Americas uh, after 1808. And, and so uh, you're going to get some early history about Natchez, the development of the Mississippi, the Southwest, and the early enslaved people who were brought here in the 1700s early 1730s on up until uh, the, the, uh, uh, the turn of the century when the cotton gin was invented. And when the cotton gin was invented, there became a, a, a huge demand of what they call a, a, a demand that could not be satisfied uh, in terms of the need for enslaved people to work the cotton and to work the sugar cane in the lower Mississippi Valley. Panel number three deals with, in the title says, America's domestic slave trading routes to the Deep South. Essentially, this panel is a map that has been overlaid several times with other maps that showed what the walking routes were from the upper low Southwest, such as uh, Maryland, Washington, D.C., Richmond, Virginia, Alexander, Virginia, the Carolinas, uh, Kentucky, Missouri, and also the routes that were uh, uh, transversed by water. The Mississippi coming around the Atlantic Ocean up to New Orleans and then trans, uh, trans, transporting from New Orleans up to Natchez, uh, which is uh, 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 up the river in, in the Mississippi area. Natchez is essentially uh, coming from New Orleans up to Natchez or down the river from St. Louis, Missouri, and, and Kentucky and what have you, to, Natch to Natchez, Vicksburg, Natchez, and New Orleans, Baton Rouge, and being sold in those markets. So that's what this particular panel talks about. And as we go around in alphabetical order, panel four. Panel four talks about enslaved people sold at the Fox of the Road was sold down the river, according to the map that we just showed you. And we have an example of an auction that might have taken place in the Upper Old South, as well as a map that talks about sold, making dollars, making money, sold down the river. In the 1830s, we have ads from the dealers and traffickers that talks about enslaved people for sale at the forks of the road, 1840s, 1850s, and into the 1860s. They were not necessary in Natchez at the forks of the road sold in auction blocks, but in uh, a, an assembly situation where one could go and inspect person 
uh, who were for sale, and if they had some interest in them, they would be taken to a private location uh, in, in, at the marketplace where they could be uh, intimately uh, examined and what have you in terms of a, a buyer's interest. Panel five gets into the real heart and testimony of what was happening at the Fox of the Road uh, market site. Who sold and brought and bought enslaved people at the Fox market? We actually have on this panel copies of original handbills that were signed by the enslaver. For example, this lot A shows a bill of sale from Theopolis Freeman from New Orleans. Theopolis Freeman in 1836 was operating in Natchez at the Fox of the Road, but also Theopolis Freeman in 1842 was the same dealer in New Orleans who sold Solomon Nostroff of 12 years of slavery and what have you. So if you want to actually see some proof of what was going on at the Fox of the Road, uh, we have the, the copies of the actual uh, bills of sale. Most of the historians who have reported on the enslavement traffic, the chattel enslavement traffic, never really uh, put specific bills of sale they might write about them with, but these are the actual copies of them as such. And so I wanted to be more uh, emphatically clear and demonstrative of, of what happened at the Fox of the Road. So we put these bills of sales about who bought at the Fox and who sold. Uh, Panel 5A, who sold and bought enslaved people at the Fox Market. Uh, here we have a chart that I've developed that shows a history of different enslavers who are selling at the Fox of the Road and different people, enslavers, who, who ill-got ancestors at the Fox of the Road, who some of those ancestors were, and what, where they were distributed to in the Mississippi, Louisiana area, and what, uh, what year that happened. Uh, another item we have an example of an 1859 bill of sale that not only give you the list of the enslaved persons sold by this dealer, Blackwell Murphy and Ferguson from Kentucky, but we have the whole names of the enslaved people who were ill-gotten and the prices that they brought. Not only that, the, the description of black, yellow, or brown, that's where we begin to get this color uh, description and what have you. So, uh, as we move on in the uh, exhibit travel, if we're touring, we want to take a look at panel six. We're looking at panel six that says, new masters, new overseers, new rules for making slaves. And we have here an example of diaries, uh, the enslavers who wrote about the rules for making enslaved persons and where whippings took place to make people, enslaved people, pick more cotton, uh, whatever it is that they had to do as a regular uh, forced labor, uh, the punishment for not getting it done or not getting enough of it done. We have it taken actually from uh, the, the, the diaries of the enslavers. And, and this shows a uh, picture of a hospital for treating enslaved during child slavery days at the Forks of the Road. So if you were going to take a look as you continue to tour the exhibit, uh, we get to panel seven. And the title of panel seven is, Habits is Everything for Making Cotton King in the Natchez Region. And what we do here is we take some more information out of uh, the, the, the diaries of, and, the, and the entries out of reports and what have you about uh, uh, the goings on on a particular plantation. This one, for, for example, tells me uh, this enslaver, the Suje people here in, uh, in the plantation in, in, uh, in Natchez in Louisiana, says on June 1854, uh, the, the uh, 19, 19 people were plowing, three were carrying water, a gang of 32 hoeing cotton, 
and Sam, Edmund, and Eliza and Martha was, were, were, let's say, let's say Sam was, was sick, but Edmund and Eliza, uh, Eliza, Martha, and were runaways as such. And so uh, you can get to see what's coming out of the particular logs or work logs or history that was being kept daily uh, on this particular panel. We'll move on to panel eight, and it talks about surviving rules and laws of slave making in the Fox region. When enslaved ancestors were brought in cap captivity from the Upper Old South, Maryland, Virginia, and those places, uh, Kentucky, uh, Missouri, they, they had to be brought into a new area of the South where they had to learn what the habits were, learn how to get along with the new masters, learn to work in hot summer, long days in place in areas uh, of, of uh, the south of the lower Mississippi area that they hadn't been used to in other times. So they had to survive all these uh, uh, type of new, new situations. And our people did survive these areas. Many ran away. Uh, all the way to Canada, to Mexico. Some ran away back to where they were enslaved, and so on. But essentially, uh, the answer of the essence is is that the enslaved people coming from the Upper Old South had to eventually uh, find ways to survive in the Old South that was different from the conditions and what have you that they had been enslaved in. And moving on around to towards the, the last of some of the panels, panel number nine, Mississippi River in the Forks of the Road region, a major underground railroad freedom route. And what this panel does, what I tried to do with this panel is to kill the legacy of the myth that once enslaved people were sold down the river, uh, they couldn't escape, you know. Uh, uh, they didn't know the terrain, all of these kinds of myths that historians have written about as to why enslaved people in the Deep South couldn't escape. Well, that was what they call now very popular fake news because the newspapers and other uh, diaries and, and other sources show that our ancestors ran away constantly, all the time, going north, south, east, west. They went by river, they, 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 they ran away from and sought their freedom with their feet. And we are hoping that I can e eventually publish uh, some of the research to show I've developed a matrix that shows uh, the runaways were women, children, uh, people who worked in the big house, what they call field hands, house hands, etc. all kinds of people. Even uh, people who were uh, uh, sons and daughters of enslaved people. The issue was freedom. And we can never emphasize the extent to which our people went to to try to get the freedom if it was temp only temporary or such. So we move on to panel 10, and it talks about my campaign in Mississippi in Natchez and what I've been doing for the last uh, 24 years here, coming up with this story about what our ancestors in, uh, impact was in reference to being sold and their efforts to seek freedom. Equal history, commemoration, advocacy, and planning. Efforts of preserving the Forks of the Road site. And essentially what it says here, it gives you an image of where the site was located, and it talks about my efforts for the last 24, going on 24 years of preserving the site, resurrecting the history, and making it public known, carrying on activities, libation, living history plays, and, and other kinds of means of letting the public know. And eventually, here in 2018, the site at the Forks of the Road that was an enslavement market site is going to become part of the Natchez National Park Service. So in 24 years of work, uh, individually, uh, collectively, and otherwise, of, of working to preserve the story of our ancestors, the site of our ancestors who were enslaved, and their contribution to making 
Mississippi and Mississippi and Natchez, Louisiana and other places, part of uh, the American uh, process and success, uh, this story is now going to be enshrined in the National Park Service and the federal government is going to have to start telling about the human history and uh, the impact of the chattel enslavement and the contributions of our ancestors who were enslaved. So finally, we get to the final panel, and it's called Events at the Foxville Road and Connecting Points on the Underground Railroad. Essentially, what uh, this panel does is to show you pictures and images of a variety of times over the last 23 years where we've had events at the Forks of the Road to highlight the history. Uh, for example, here's uh, Congressman Benny Thompson, who is uh, elected to the U.S. Congress from Mississippi, who's visiting the Forks of the Road. We talk about Emancipation Proclamation or Underground Railroad type of activity. We have here a panel that shows U.S. colored troops. Uh, these are reenactors who react in the story of what happened during the Civil War and our people self-emancipated. That is, they ran away to become uh, behind Union lines to get their freedom and many of them became freedom-fighting Union soldiers. We call that kind of thing underground railroad activity. And we uh, have over in this particular part of the panel information about the Underground Railroad Network the Freedom Program of the Park Service and their interest in helping us uh, to tell the story here in Mississippi, here in Natchez. So folks, this is what my Fox of the Road Traveling Exhibition essentially is about. Uh, it gives you uh, details and more to work with, educates you even more so about the Fox of the Road and the dealings and trafficking and history that, of child slavery uh, that took place at the Fox of the Road. I like to say that the Fox of the Road tells the story of what the enslavers did to our people and the blacks uh, the ex-slave, uh, the runaway enslaved people, self-emancipated, who became Civil War freedom fighters, tell the story of what we did to the enslaver, how our ancestors helped to destroy chattel slavery, make 13th, 14th, 15th uh, Amendment freedom, constitutional freedom amendments uh, 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 possible by helping to defeat the South. Uh, the exhibit is available for showing at other locations and venues if you were interested in it. We're at the Natchez Convention Center and the exhibit has been up since January of this year, 2018. And the comments that have been coming from the tourists from all over the world is that it's a great exhibit. I enjoyed it, loved it, excellent, awesome, and on and on with those kinds of comments as they, and it helps to open up the heads and ideas of people here in the tourism industry who have been afraid to really talk about child slavery in Natchez. And I thank the people who have helped me in the past with the struggle and, and the struggle continues.